Project 64 has been the longest used emulator and even I have been using this emulator for the last 12 years to play and mod Nintendo 64 games. Until last week, when AgLab discovered an insane vulnerability in this emulator that would let people put any virus, keylogger or crypto miner they want into an N64 game and have it run on your computer. Usually, emulators are kind of like virtual machines, something that is known to protect you from viruses. So this may come as a huge surprise to most people. But it turns out, even virtual machines can have bugs that can be abused to bypass any such protection. If you're familiar with video game glitches, you may have heard of an arbitrary code execution bug that lets people run any code they like on the console that they're playing through an in-game bug. This is a pretty famous glitch in Super Mario World, where they can program any game they want into Mario World, and Sauron did a pretty cool showcase of this bug in Ocarina of Time for GDQ, where he showcased the Breath of the Wild type cutscene running on the N64. Why am I talking about that? Well, AgLab has found such an arbitrary code execution bug within Project 64 1.6, the version that almost everyone uses. This bug also exists in all versions before 1.6, most notably 1.4, which is an emulator that is still in use nowadays because it has support for Calera, which is online multiplayer on N64 games. Fortunately, instead of just installing crypto miners onto everyone's computers, Egglet made a silly mod that just opens Never Gonna Give You Up in a browser tab. And of course, he shared the knowledge about this vulnerability. I'll go over his explanation and fill in a few details to make this a bit more digestible, so shoutouts to Egglet for this entire write-up. The basic job of an emulator is to translate machine language used for a console into something your computer can understand. Machine language consists of plenty of instructions that each do one small thing. One such piece of language would be a store instruction, which stores a value somewhere in memory. This exploit targets in the store instructions. It manages to hijack the store instructions to store data outside of the intended emulated N64 memory and override code that is running on your computer when you use this emulator. When Project 64 translates a store instruction from an N64 to Windows, part of this translation is turning the address that would be used on the N64 into a corresponding memory address in the emulator. Unfortunately, there was an oversight translating the address. It uses the TLB write map here to quickly find the address, but only the range 0x80000000 to 0xc000000 was mapped into the N64 memory, meaning any store to an address below or above that range would write directly into the emulator memory, letting you write Windows assembly that will then be executed on your computer directly, without that layer of virtual machine protection. And this little snippet written by AgLab is all you really need to pull off this exploit. Of course, your payload here would have to be a Windows virus program and you'd have to find a good address to inject the virus into to successfully execute it. Which is possible of course, as he's showcased with the never gonna give you up video. I'm surprised I haven't destroyed anything on my PC before, considering how common it is to accidentally write to a low RAM address. Running code like this would just crash on the real Nintendo 64, which is why no game does it and why this wasn't an issue with the emulator until just now. This exploit could be injected into any mod or even any official game you could download online. All it takes is for one person to write the virus a single time and re-upload a bunch of ROMs with the code injected. This clip here from DevWizard also showcases some more funny stuff you can do with this, proving a skilled programmer can take advantage of this exploit pretty easily. If this scares you enough to switch off Project 64 1.6, and it really should, because you could lose all your online passwords or accounts, you might think about what your next emulator should be. Most people like Power Launcher the most, and I've already got a setup tutorial for you. I'll link it in the description. It comes with a bunch of neat features to play mods easier as well. There are also newer versions of Project 64 that don't have this vulnerability anymore, if you'd like to stick with Project 64. Although there is the fact that later Project 64 versions had their official installer bundled with optional malware in toolbars and all that stuff, and they also added the next screen nagging you to donate, 
so I don't know if you really want to keep using Project 64. Of course, I appreciate what they did for all of us with giving us this amazing emulator, but something somehow they just went off the deep end. I don't know what happened. And if you're switching emulators, you might as well check out Eglab's version of Gliden. This is the graphics plugin I test with, as it is the most convenient to use and accurate enough to the N64 to run my games. Using it basically guarantees all the Mario 64 mods look as intended on your end. And if you're looking for a mod to play, you might as well also check out Ike Labs mods. I promise you, he didn't put any viruses in them. That's all, stay safe, don't get hacked, do not use this emulator anymore. It is seriously a huge security concern. But on the bright side, the devils are used to make the funniest anti-piracy screen I've ever seen.